Hey guys, this is Hunter Levine, and thank you for listening to The Captain's Collective. This is a podcast that's dedicated to gathering insight, tips, knowledge, and stories from fishing guides and other industry leaders. We have been having a blast going around and sitting down with these guys, and we hope that this will continue to be something that you enjoy. Thanks to everybody who's been out there giving us feedback, sharing the podcast, and leaving reviews. It helps a ton. In today's episode, we sit down with Scott Burgess of Skinny Situation Charters. Scott guides all along the forgotten coast of Florida, and in this episode, we talk about his story, how he went from being a manager in the bar scene to being the first person in his family to own a boat. He literally started this business from scratch. And now, Scott is a great guide who has a passion for chasing fish, and he's getting to build a business doing what he loves. You're going to get some great content on sight fishing, setting up clients for success, and some really good insights on chasing the infamous big black drum. We hope that you guys enjoy. Thanks for the support. This is the Captain's Collective. Success is a gift. Excellence is the only thing to strive for. He tried to eat it. He tried to eat it. Hit him, hit him, hit him, hit him. He got him. He's on. Got two butt caps off the rods, filled them with tequila. We took a shot and out we went. There there ain't no getting into it after that. It's, you're you're hooked. It's a bad habit. And all the time, Flip's standing there ready to go for a tarpon. Any time, I said, you talk so much, you're like a senator. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank Do you me. mind just telling us a little bit about your charter business and how you got into fishing and being a captain? How I got into guiding, it started at an early age when me and my mom used to go out. I was born in Sarasota, so we went to a pier, grabbed donut holes, bag of frozen shrimp, and uh, go to the pier, you know. So here comes this little towhead with a little push button, you know, Snoopy rod and uh, passing all the guys with like their big carts and their big rigs and all the gear and stuff. And here I come and I'm just pulling up fish. And, you know, it, I, I think that started my passion for fishing is that special time that I did spend with my mother, you know, just uh, gaining knowledge over over the years, you know, Lived in Sarasota, moved outside of Tampa and Valrico Brandon. Started fishing the golf course a lot for bass. Played golf as well. And I actually hid a a fishing rod in the bushes. So when I'd walk to the golf course, I would fish on the way there and then fish on the way home. And pretty much I've always had a passion for fishing. And then it just, you know, came up to Tallahassee in 2004 for school and found a the forgotten coast in 2005 and I never left and you know gaining knowledge from time on the water and figuring stuff out it just I knew it was my passion and that what I wanted my profession to be you know and I love teaching people and you know of course all guides say you know seeing your client catch a fish is very very exciting uh more exciting than you actually catch a fish it's true you know, it, it, it really is, um, you know, when a client gets their first redfish or any type of fish, it's a, it's a blast to see their excitement. So, I mean, that's pretty much how I got into it. And man, and, and for you, what were you doing before you were guiding? So you came up to Tallahassee to do school. Yeah. Yeah. I came up, uh, school and then, um, you know, I worked my first job in Tallahassee. I worked at Momo's pizza. So I was throwing pizza and uh met some buddies and then next thing you know i got into the bar industry um did the bar industry for a long time uh ran a couple bars here and you know with working at night that allowed me to fish during the day and at least get out there on the water and experience something new and try to find different fish learn something and just taking it all in man and just going out so you would you would work a bar till what time oh man it, it always varies you know like Depending get on home, how many like, knuckleheads yeah. or whatever. Yeah, like, so, you know, get home at like 2.33, sometimes maybe 3.30. Uh, never really got that early bite, but I made the bite, you know, at some point in the day and uh, do that for a little bit and 
take a nap and go back to work and you know just uh it, it was a complete opposite environment with how untouched and quiet our coastline is from being in that loud you know dj drunk college kids running around you know it, i it was my happy place and that's why i fell in love with it and i never left that's some know? contrast going from a bunch of college kids hanging out at a bar going crazy to uh, the peace of being on the forgotten coast. Right, right. Maybe seeing a couple boats, if that, you know, so. It, and I think, too, just some dedication because you're out all night, you're dealing with a lot of loud music, you're dealing with some headaches in, in many senses of the, of the word. And then, you know, you're driving out 30, 45, yep. an hour, you know, depending on where you're going, and just making that a priority. I mean, what, what a, to you about fishing drew you in? Probably, you. I mean, you think you know so much, but then one day it could stump you. You know, it's always a different battle. Um, I could get bored with things really easily. And fishing, you never know what you're going to get into. And you got to take all these different variables that saltwater presents and put them together in an equation to ha make it successful, you know. And I love that challenge and the challenge of, putting on putting my clients to understand that and to help them get that success is what really really drew me into guiding so something i know about you is you're the first person in your immediate family to own a boat is that right oh yeah oh yeah i mean my dad you know he grew up uh up north in boston and his dad had bought a 13 foot whaler and he kind of like put it around the marina but my mom pretty much gave me the basis of learning how to fish and uh then i just took it to the next level and read books watched fishing shows back in the day on espn waking up early um you know eating french toast watching you know jimmy houston and and flip and when fishing shows were very informative um, unlike some today, <laughs> before the drone shots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you, you know, just and and just being a sponge. Um, and I always wanted a boat, you know. In like elementary school, you draw pictures of like a boat, and then you try to find a name for it. Like, oh, I'm gonna name my boat River Rat, you know, or something like that. And was that was that an original name idea you had? Yeah, cause, skinny situations <laughs> definitely. Well, better. all right, so We're that start that's a good River story. Rat. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good story. Uh, I was fishing with my buddy Todd, and we were fishing a tournament, and you know, this is when I had a. Uh, a little Carolina skiff and that water's rushing out 7:30 rolls around we cast in boom he hits a good redfish i mean i'm talking about a good one 26 and 3 quarters good you know so we're like stoked so he throws back in there again bam gets another one and i'm like oh yeah this is going to be great and you know in the excitement he looks down and goes man we're in a skinny situation right now i was like yeah but this boat can do it I think we could get out of here and you know we ended up getting out of here so i just took that and uh tried to do some original you know there's a lot of uh kind of charter names that kind of bounce off of each other with the expeditions adventures blah 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 you know someone's got to have an inshore in there but you know i just kind of went off with my own thing and i mean i like skinny water i love sight fishing so it for me and my style of fishing it works out well yeah i mean river rat would have been a good route no too. well i i hey you can find me on the river uh come august you know september <laughs> when you can really rest hot. assured every time i see you i'm gonna call you river hey, if that's hey, cool as as you river me, rat. you know <laughs> just up, throw river? me a bush latte and call me yeah. a, you know <laughs> that's river hey, rat. i want to circle good. back to you know you said you were the first person to own a boat you didn't you know coming up here i remember talking to you earlier you said you know a lot of people that we talk to they always seem to have somebody that kind of takes them under their wing and shows them, shows them the ropes fishing. I mean, I have, you know, my dad, he, he loved to fish and he showed me a lot of freshwater stuff. Uh, Hunter's dad, Chip, he kind of introduced me to the saltwater world. Uh, and he's taught me a lot and you kind of said you didn't really have that. Um, or did you? No, no, no. no. So, I, so, I, I mean, I fish with buddies, you know, yeah. I mean, you fish with buddies, you always pull a little something off. And, and that's the cool thing about fishing is, 
you know, you could fish with someone and kind of pull a tactic off or, you know, pulls what, what are, what do they look for or this or that? But, you know, I never really had anybody, uh, you know, be my mentor, right. I guess you could right. say, um, you know, I started when I started fishing St. Mark's, I, I saved up and bought my first boat. It was a little 14 foot tiller, you know, oh, and right it was on. great. And, uh, for seven years, I fished that area without a GPS, only a compass and landmarks. And of course, when I got my GPS, I was like, what was I doing? Because it's a lot easier now. And, but you know, it just, it's paying attention to success and, um, anybody can learn something if you have a passion for it if you have that drive i believe it and i would read i i, I mean i've one of the uh books i read when i was very very young was i i think it's called like bassin with the best you know and, and it has different crate bait techniques or soft plastics and has kevin van, van dam in there or jimmy houston you know and uh, Ever since I read that book and then I imitated what I read and had success, I knew that the possibilities were endless, you right. know? So I, I mean, I, I self-taught, I guess you could say, yeah. you know, so I mean, it's kind of taken those, those positive moments where, Hey, the tide was doing this. I caught fish at this time right. when that tide was doing that and Re taking that yeah. and then ignoring the three days before that you didn't even see a fish right you didn't get hooked up didn't even you know nothing oh, that, they, that's they, so that's part of that success and that learning curve that you you had just picking up on this stuff yeah you I, and you know being i think one of the biggest successful uh traits a fisherman can have is repeating success and and paying attention to that not just be like oh man i caught you know a week ago i caught five redfish over here but i don't know what the tide was doing or this or that you know like you gotta pay attention to it and um you could put that puzzle together to where you become more successful and uh, you know that's what i did and um just uh trying out a bunch of different stuff and um getting a lot of refusals <laughs> you know oh, yeah. but you know uh that just it it drove me to be a better fisherman and become more successful. Interviewing Harry Spear in the first podcast we did, he kind of said something similar to the thing you said about this equation, which was, he said, it's kind of like being a great fisherman and being a great tournament fisherman is kind of like there's this, this pie and there's all these little slices and you're trying to put all those things together. And a lot of times what separates somebody from being a good fisherman and a great fisherman is some of the smaller slices that, that aren't seen. But I think, you know, when we talk about you starting from scratch and learning the hard way, you know, out with a compass, 14 foot boat, tiller steering, you know, no GPS. What for, what for you was the most helpful thing in kind of starting to put that equation together? Failure, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I, I, I'd go out a lot of times and, I've always been one to pull a boat, you know, uh, for a couple of years I was trolling motor heavy and, you know, buzzing around and stuff, but I feel when you slow things down and actually take it into a different, slower perspective, perspective, excuse me, you know, that, that allows you to soak up more knowledge about what's going on. And I mean, I started with a Creek, went to the next Creek doing this, that, that, driving around, see something that I think looks good, an advantage, uh, advantage point for a fish to eat bait or whatever. And um, it, it was a lot, of a lot of trial and error, a lot of trial and error. So um, just taking notes, you know, mental notes. I, I, I think that was probably the best thing I could have done. And just putting in the hard work, putting in the time. Yeah, and... T-O-W, man, time on the water. A lot of people ask me, you know, oh, how'd you become, you know, just time on the water doing it when you're on your couch and it's blowing 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. I'm out there doing it, you know, do I like it? No, but you got to, you got to see what's going on and um, you got to fish all conditions because you're not always going to have those bluebird days where it's slick calm, you know, you got to figure out that equation 
for the wind, tides, and they're all different. When, when you were first starting and kind of getting your business off the ground, what were some of the challenges that you faced out the gate? And how, how are some ways that you overcame those challenges? Well, you know, uh, having a, a bunch of friends in town and uh, a bunch of inexperienced friends um, that wanted to go fishing and share, you know, uh, my time on the water, go out there, have a good time and see what I'm doing. It, it, it taught me um, how to teach. And of course, with working in the bars, uh, you know, I'm very patient. <laughs> so I think one of the biggest hurdles being a, a new guide into fly fishing and light tackle is having those fly guys come down from Ohio, Montana, you know, just trout fishermen, never been on a boat, have never experienced that wind or anything, and they, they're having problems with casting. And I think one of the biggest uh, hurdles was learning how to teach them and improve their casting. So by... 45 minutes into it, they're actually hauling and shooting that line to where we do have a chance to be successful, you know? And if not, if red fishing's hard for on, on fly, it is, you know? Um, you know, they could be spooky, this, that. I mean, you gotta put it in front of them and present the bait right. So if they don't come off with a fish, they at least come off with something from me, you know, a new technique or, teaching about uh you know mainly putting my experience in the words and helping somebody and putting that equation for me as a guide to help somebody was um uh, you know it was a little challenging at first but you know it, it it all comes with repetition and um you know now i i don't even think twice about it you know it 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 kind of lingered around a little bit but then you know you just you just be yourself and have a good time out there and try to teach and put success on the boat, you know? So that's about it. Um, what about this? So when you started fishing, uh, you obviously decided you want to be a guide. What made you go inshore, you know, redfish, trout, tarpon, instead tarpon, yeah. of, instead of, you know, you got the guys that do the near shore or offshore. I enjoy the hunt of inshore. Um, I don't think, you know, I, I, I fish offshore with my buddies and stuff. I mean, I'll go do it every once in a while, but mainly I like to see a fish eat or uh, be in some super shallow water up in some creeks, you know, just um, with beautiful scenery around. And it's mainly the hunt. And I love feeding fish and watching them eat. I think there's nothing cooler than making or tricking a fish into eating something artificial, you know, and even with a fly, something that you make, you know, I, I think it's, it's very rewarding. Um, and you know, that, uh, to have clients first time sight fish and catch a fish while watching it eat, that's like, they're stoked, you oh, know, yeah. it, it, it's awesome. Oh, so, yeah. um, yeah, I, I, I enjoy the inshore, you know, and I always say if I have two axles on my trailer, I probably can't afford the boat. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that takes some toll on your body. My dad just had neck surgery and he just decided uh, I'm not going to do the, the near shore snapper and all that this year. He's going to focus more on the flats and not get beat up out there. And have oh, we, we get beat up, though, you know, I mean. You run, uh, you know, one of my boats is the Waterman 2002 Tunnel. You know, it's two degree in the back. It's a great boat. I'll never sell it. Hopefully never will. It's a lifetime hole for me. Um, but, you know, you're going to get beat up regardless throughout the day. Um, you know, pushing a boat all day with a long stick isn't the best thing, you know, for your knees or your back. But I, I truly enjoy it. And... Um, you know, just getting up in some shallow water and finding some fish just hanging out around the corner. I don't think uh, there's anything better than that. One, one of the things I love about talking with you is you can tell that you really care about your clients. You want them to have a good time. You want them to catch fish. You want them to learn something. You've been talking about this tonight. 
but like, what's a successful day look like for you? Like, what are you hoping that client experiences beyond just catching fish? Uh, just good conversation, getting understanding of each other, you know, cause I, I, I've been in hospitality since I was 15 years old and, you know, meeting people and, um, you know, just seeing what other people are about and like their techniques and stuff like that is really cool to me, but just, um, uh, you know, making a relationship along with trying to catch fish and share a passion with them. Um, I just want, I, whatever, however the fishing goes, I want my client to be like, well, you know what? I had a great time today. I didn't have to worry about anything. Captain was great. Um, and it was very relaxing. I want them to be as relaxed as possible. And, you know, my style of guiding, I'm not really a drill sergeant. You know, I have clients that have been like straight up, you know, I'm only going to fish with you because, yeah, you you throw some shots at me, but you're not killing me. You know, you, we're having a good time, even though I'm messing up. You're, you're you know, that positive reinforcement is 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 crucial. So, you know, just, it's mainly about them having a good time because I mean, they're paying me and I want to give them the best service possible that I can for them to achieve that good time. Right. So, and we, so we have a friend in home, Asasa, he's a guy down there. Uh, and he always, he's told, he's told me and, and Hunter and Chip, you know, they, they come in, they never ask, Hey, how, did y'all wear them out? How many did y'all catch? Cause that's, I mean, yeah, that is the goal. You know, you're taking somebody, they're paying you to go take them to catch fish. But uh, the bigger part of that is they're paying for that experience. You know, he said the the, the first question I always ask is, hey, did y'all have a good day? Yeah, yeah. Y you you know, know, whether you caught fish or not, you can right. still have a good day. And that's, that's the biggest part, of, I think, of y'all's job as guides. Well, and, you know, I, I, I agree with that. Um, you know, when we come in or I see somebody and someone's like, hey, how'd y'all do? Hey man, we had a good time. Had a great day. Bro. Or we did well. You know, I I mean, there's no bragging rights or anything like that. I mean, anybody can put up numbers of fish, you know, but it's all about having that good time and I mean, th that's what the clients want. They want to learn something from you. You know, they want to see what you're about too. And um, you know, of course, catching fish where that's the goal that we're both share once we push off that dock but i think it's more or less um uh, having a good time and, and a stress-free environment that's what the, that's what you know i feel clients want sometimes yeah and if you're enjoyable to be around you know you got some guy who's maybe they don't get a fish as much as they'd like to maybe they live in atlanta or tennessee or something and they're sitting around they're saving up their money they're talking to their wife they're working their calendar out man and it's great to see that repeat customer, that guy yeah. coming back to go, man, I, I want to go fish with Scott. And right. they're not, yeah, we're going to catch fish, but like, I love being on the boat with him. And, you know, I can tell that that's a concern for you. That's something you care about. And I'm sure with the longevity of things, you know, I have friends who fished with you and they speak really highly of you. And they also talk about you getting on fish and you being good at <laughs> sight fishing, you know, so that helps, right? Because yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, you could, if you want to hang out with someone who's fun and have a good time, right, you, don't, right. you don't have to get on an airplane for that, but right. You know, and I want to talk about sight fishing, but, uh, you know, when we talked about the fact that some guys, you know, maybe their dads were guides, maybe their dads just did a lot of fishing or they had these, these kind of close mentor figures to them, I talked a decent bit of guides this year that that's part of their story. But for you, you know, you talked about, oh, I'm, I'm going through DVDs and videos and magazines and trying to piece all this together and, and seem like a real self-starter. But if you could go out with any guide, and it could be an old TV dude, or who who would it be? I mean, who would you want to hang out on the boat with? Man, I've always been Jimmy Houston guy. You know, I, I, I hey, he's he's a trip. You know, he he's a good dude. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, there's so many great fishermen out there. Um, and you know, even though Jimmy's not a saltwater guy, I he's a lot of fun. And, and you know that's that's what I I I kind of want to follow, you know, because it's all about having a good time, you know. And uh, I mean, on the saltwater side, uh, 
a, you know, rest in peace, but it'd be Jose, you know, because I grew up watching the Spanish fly and, um, you know, and, and, you know, Flip's a great guy too. I've met him a couple of times at ICAST and stuff and he would, you know, he's like one of my clients I had Bob senior. He was 92. He sat in, you know, my little chairs I have on the waterman caught like 28 redfish. We were just hitting the creeks going at it. And, the whole time he was just telling me stories and, and, and that was great. You know, that, that was really, really cool. So just to hear those stories from some of those older guys, not really even pulling fishing techniques from them, just, you know, just kind of hang out with them. You know, that, that'd be pretty cool. Man, that's awesome. And you talk about catching redfish and talking about skinny situations and your love for the flats. And that is something I know about you. And I've, I've heard from multiple people who have fished with you that, that you're good at sight fishing, you're good at, at getting on a red fish and, and setting your client up to be able to make a successful cast and feed the fish. And I love this to transition a little bit to that. Uh, could you just tell us too, what all you target and, and kind of how you run that out of your charter? Redfish trout in the winter time. Um, I could redfish trout all year actually. And, uh, tarpon in the summertime and then we'll have trip, triple tail cobia and all that stuff and everything will cruise the flats as well um as long as i could see him eat my bait i'm in you know i, I i'm down with that fish so um i i use a lot of soft plastics uh, i think soft plastics are probably the way to go if you want a sight fish um, you have a single hook which you could set you get a stronger hold on that fish rather than worrying about treble hooks you know so um it, it's it's good challenging and it's it's more of that hunt that i always talk about that i enjoy out of it so so following up on the what you target what are you the best at <laughs> uh i mean hands down redfish i've been doing it longest right on. you know i mean and plus i mean who doesn't like a redfish pull you know well, I, you can't beat it i i mean if redfish jump like a tarpon they probably be the one of the best sport fish inshore that you could target and i i think they are still you know they make long hard runs you could uh you kind of manhandle them they're hardy fish um you don't have to worry about uh you know i mean of course you don't want to roll a martin you know hook set them but you know you could set that hook in there and feel that backbone and uh they're they're strong fish they're great and plus we get some big ones yeah, and they're fun on the fly. They are. They're they're fun for kids too. Like oh, I love yeah. taking kids fishing, man. That's the future. You know, I I really really enjoy taking kids fishing. So, so when you're at the beginning of your day, and we talked a little bit over over dinner about um, you know weather and different factors like that, you're definitely not conservative on chicken wings. So <laughs> I think if, 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 uh, chicken wings and steaks were floating around the ocean, we might have a, a few less honest men about it. But, uh, you know, um, when you're sitting out at the beginning of your day and you're thinking through all the different factors, I mean, what does it look like for you to, to plan a day to take a, a guy out? Well, you know, I mean, we could all plan a day, but you never know until you get there, you know? And that's one thing that I do like about guiding is, there's always something that you have to adjust, you know, it's not the same thing every day. I mean, I could have same tides, uh, different wind or go back to the weather guy. He could say it's slick calm and then you get down there. It's howling, you know, so you never know what's going to happen. Um, I, I always look at certain things to, for my water level judgment, you know, and, um, just, taking little pieces at, as I'm running out to be like, okay, well, the tide didn't come in this much because of north wind or there's a bunch of water in because of south wind pushing it in, you know. Um, I mean, we all, like, wish we could plan a whole day and it just work out perfectly, but it never yeah. happens. Yeah. You know? Someone once told my dad, you know, you're not really worried about plan A. You got to be thinking about plan B and yep. C because – you know, you, you better ought to be thinking about D at right, that point. Yeah. But what do <laughs> yeah. you use? To, do, you, do you have any way that you just kind of try to hold it in your head? Or do you have any way that you try to store the different factors of tides? And I, Yeah, it's, it's all mental. It, it's, it's about caring, 
you know, if you care about something, you're going to remember about it, you know, and I think that's where my passion runs deep and allows me to do that. And, um, you know, if I do go fish, say when I go down to fish at Everglades or something like that, I do take notes and I'll screenshot areas of Google earth and say, I'm, you know, laid up tarpon or whatever. I'll put dots of where I found those fish, you know, because I'm not doing that every day. So that's a good, Hey, let's go back and check this. But you know, when you're doing it every day in your home waters, I don't travel to fish. Um, I like to stay in my little area. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it, it just comes second nature because I'm always out there. Yeah. And we'll make sure to include those screenshots in the show notes. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Now, if there are things drawn on them, inappropriate, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, you know, when you're out there and you're, let's say that you're in a spot and you're fishing and, and maybe you've pre-fished or you've been on it for a, a week or two, and then you're having to make the decision that you know, I need, I need to go check something else out. What's your thought process like on, on how long you're going to stay somewhere and how right. you- Well, see, I don't like to beat up fish. You know, um, if I have a school fish, we'll pull, you know, a couple out and then, I mean, there's other spots, there's more fish. So I don't like to beat up on fish too much. Um, uh, but you know, for those spots where I know fish are, when I go scouting, I don't hit those spots. Because I know I could go up to that spot, cast right there, and I could pull fish out. I mean, in theory, you know. Uh, but you, it's it's uh, it's kind of you know managing your spots because you don't want to just be there all the time and stuff like that. So, well, you know, when I go out, typically what I'll do is I'll put my headphones in because I'm solo, or I'll bring my new pup, uh, Jetson. And, um, I'll go out there to a new area. I'll hop on the pole and I'll just look, I'll catch one fish maybe. And then I'll just look at fish, you know, just to see what they do. You know, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I love catching fish. That passion's still there, but it's more or less learning and, and building a different equation for when I need it. So, um, you know, you just got to balance it. It's a healthy balance. Yeah. I mean, any other factors that you try to work in with your scouting? I mean, just, well, you know, I mean, Google earth is huge. Um, you know, and I've probably been up in every Creek, but it's just, uh, going out there and fishing and not, not doing your normal, you know, going back to the basics and actually fishing, trying to find fish. You know, I think that's kind of a lost art nowadays. You know, um, some people love the instant gratification and that's not fishing to me, oh, you no. know, cause they, there's a lot of failure, you know, but with failure will come success. And you know, when that success does happen, it's very, very rewarding. And when you think about sight fishing, targeting redfish, or, I mean, really anything you said to put it your words, anything that you can see and feed, uh, what makes a great sight fisherman to you? Patience, you know, slowing down, you know, and, uh, not get, I mean, look, I see a tarpon coming down the line. My knees still shake. And when they stop shaking, I'll probably stop fishing them. But I don't think that'll ever happen because again, I love big fish. So, um, you know, it, it's just staying calm, just staying calm. And I tell my clients that all the time, like, Hey, stay calm. If you stay calm and don't make sporadic movements and actually think about what you're about to do and play it out through your head real quick that's probably the best thing you could do. You know, of course you don't want to cast it too far from that fish or cast it too close to that fish. There's a, a healthy medium there that each fish is different, which makes me like sight fishing a lot, but, um, yeah, it's, it, it's staying calm. And, you know, I used to be, you know, when I first started sight fishing, do you, you'd be really excited and you might, you might step or move on the boat and then it spooks the fish. You know, it's all about just staying calm. You just got to stay calm and catch that fish. It's, it, it's, it's really easy. It, well, it's easier said than done. But, you know, once you get it, I, I, I think that is the biggest thing is just staying calm and making that shot count 
you know, because you only, only might get one, you know. So um, I, 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 and sometimes I think the fish can feel that energy. If you're all crazy up on the bow and, you know, moving around and stuff. Oh, yeah. oh is someone guilty of this? <laughs> I've been I've been known to get excited. Hunter, all right, fair enough. Hunter may throw an eight weight with his entire body. Yeah. Oh, I've and never, so you're a boat rocker. I've, yeah, oh, oh, yeah. that's yeah. There's a name for it. Oh, there's yeah. a name well, for see, it. you know, and, and I like to call it an athlete. I like to really get into it. <laughs> right, so right, right. I put my heart into it. Now I'm working on that. I mean, that's that's something I was gonna say as a follow up is. Let's say that you got a, a, a client on your boat and in your mind, you know, you're thinking through, okay, I know where these fish are. I'm targeting them. I'm going to set my client up. But I mean, what, what's the most important thing for that client to grasp in order to succeed? Is it that patience piece? Well, it, it is. And you know, as I'm moving into area, I, I will be letting the client know what's going on and what to expect. Like, look, these fish are going to be here. Let's present the bait here, and then I want you to, depending on how the fish are acting that day, if they're eating on the bottom or they want a little nice retrieve with a paddle tail or whatnot, you know, we're going to go over the pres presentation process. And it's, it, I feel, in my experience, that is calming to the client because you're not just throwing them to the wolves. You know, you're working in slowly with these people and coaching them. And, and I love, I love coaching and helping. So it, it, it works out a lot, but you know, just staying calm and, um, letting them know what your ex expectations are helps them do your expectations rather than just be like, all right, cast man, 11 o'clock. Yeah. That know? makes sense. And so do you work through kind of, you get somebody out on the boat, Hey, let's just go ahead and, and work through a few things. Oh yeah. Go ahead I, and throw th 30 yards at 11 for I, me. I, I, I mean, I, Every time I go out with a client, I pull up, I take out my push pole, stake it out, tie it off. I'm like, all right, man, this is what's going to happen. Let's see, you know, if it's a fly guy, I'll be like, hey, let's take a couple warm up casts. Let's get the jitters off. You know, it's all good. And with uh, spin guys, uh, clients, you know, I'll, I'll I'll be like, look, this is this is where I want it in the water column. This is how I want you to present it. So I will take time before we actually start the day and kind of give them a basis. And then that way I could go back to it throughout the day and be like, hey, man, remember what I suggested? You know, me being my passive aggressive, yeah. you know, this is what I suggested. Let's try that, you know, and let, let's see if that that's going to make the equation become successful. Yeah. And I'm sure they take away a lot from that too and, and right. say, hey, man, I, I feel like I walked away from this learning something better. Well, it, and it, that's the thing. Like, okay, any, you know, there are guys that go out there and they'll, uh, you know, throw out some dead bait on the bottom or pop a course, which is fine. I, I mean, I, I, I've been known to do it. I, I play my clients, you know, and that's what be, makes you a successful captain is because not all clients are the same. So you got to go with their experience level. But, you know, if the clients there or the captain's hooking fish and then handing the rod over to the client, that's not as special as them making that hook set from, you know, get, and then bringing that fish all the way to the boat. So from start to finish, they did it, you know. And with sight fishing, I am teaching them a whole new tactic or technique and they're they're watching it unfold in front of them and you know you could sight fish two fish one fish eight fish ten fish twelve fish it's still going to be better than that 50 fish day well at least to me and, and to that client too because if they want they're learning a, a new thing that they could take to other species and use and catch that fish so you know um I, that, that's what's drawn me into that shallow water. Yeah. It's, it's making that connection with that fish. I, I hunted this fish, right? There he is. I somehow gathered myself enough to make a cast <laughs> yeah, and yeah. put a fly in front of that fish. Yeah. Watch him eat and catch it. Oh yeah. It's, you know, I, I got buddies knock me all the time, you know, oh, tarpon are stupid. Talk why are you catching tarpon? Well, you aren't. can't eat them. It's like, okay, man, you know, Hey, I'm going to drop a pin fish down. Oh, it's shaking its head. It's a snapper like that. You know, and that's cool. It, people, yeah, you know, they yeah. like it and that's awesome. But, you know, for me and I think for you and, and Hunter, it, it's it's making that 
that one-on-one connection with yeah. that fish. Uh-huh. You pick that fish out, you place that fly. Or, or, it, or soft plastic. It, or, or, yeah. yeah it, 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 what, whatever exactly. the case may be. I mean, I'm in the business to catch fish. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love throwing the fly rod. I picked up the fly rod because I know with a spin, spinning rod in my hand, I have a good, great probability of catching that fish. But going to fly, there are a bunch of variables that have Whole to come into play for you to make, make it become successful. And, you know, fly line lo- loves getting tangled up on everything. Yeah. It, it, and, um, you know, that's a challenge in itself. And, um, you know, we all, we all like to challenge ourselves once we kind of hit a climax point in something. We want to go on and try to challenge ourselves, do some harder or better or, you know, whatever the case may be. But um, I, I, I think you're right. It, it is a personal connection with that fish that you just fed. And I don't think there's any better feeling than that. Mm-hmm. Do you have any stories of being out with clients that just are kind of ones that stick out to you about maybe them starting to off the day on a, on a wrong foot and it getting better? Or? Yeah. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> um, I mean, they, they, there's been a bunch of crazy little stories, you know, and I mean, all of them are, are good in their own way. And, um, uh, it, it makes me better as a guide experiencing those things because, you know, once you do something or experience something like that, you kind of take your notes. And then if it pops up again, later on down the road, you could kind of resolve this situation or cut it off and then, you know, get them back on the right foot of having a good time or something like that, you know, but yeah, there's, uh, the, there's some funny stories. What, what what do you do when you're out with a client and you're just, you go off on the wrong foot and just, whether it's your, you got to find a common medium, you know, that I, a, a common, you, you got to get them to talk about what they want. And, um, you could read people. I, I could read people very, very well from being in hospitality and, and, and you find what makes them happy. And, I mean, hopefully it's, it's just being out there and, and having the chance to learn something new, catch new fish or what, whatever, you know, but, um, I think, uh, it's just, you know, and that's the challenge and being a captain in itself is you are responsible for your boat and, and the mood and what's going on so if it's not going well you better pick it up man you know because you want those people to come back it is you know a new client jumping on my boat is a potential client for a repeat you know and they're they're very important you know so it's all word of mouth game and um it's a battle in itself yeah and i wonder too i mean i haven't talked to anybody about this just kind of popped up in my head but um, you know, there's a lot of people who you go on social media, you follow a bunch of guides and for lack of a better phrase, you're catching their highlight reel. I mean, you're seeing the big fish they catch, you're seeing the good days, you're seeing lots of videos and in some, some level it can kind of skew the expectation just right. because, I mean, everybody's posting their highlights. That's yeah, fine. I don't yeah. have a problem with that. Oh, yeah. oh, but yeah. have you noticed that that can, can be a, a, a negative that maybe some people come in with just a little bit of high expectations that kind of erode some of that patience? Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, when a client jumps on board, I always ask them, I'm like, what do you expect today? Well, what are your expectations? And that allows me as a guide to try to fulfill those expectations because that's what they want. And that's why I want to give them, you know, to have them come back. Um, and you know, sometimes you got to break them down. You know, dude hops on the boat and goes, man, I want to catch 25 redfish on fly. I'm like, bud, that ain't going to happen. I, I, I love your optimism. And, you know, thank you for thinking I'm that good. I mean, we could have some stellar days now where it could happen. But, you know, when it's blown 10 to 15, it's probably not going to happen. Let's be honest, you know. Um, but, yeah, it's just, uh, you know, just figuring out their expectations and trying to fulfill them. And you talked a little bit earlier about 
you know, hey, it takes some failing. It takes some getting out there and having some bad days. There's a there's a phrase in leadership, failing forward. So you're learning something from it. But let's say that you have a, a client on your boat and you just have a tough day, man. Maybe, maybe it's weather. Maybe it's just a number of factors. I mean, do you have any things that, that you try to do to help them understand that? And Well, you know, you always want to talk through the day, you know, and it's not like I'm doing anything wrong on my part. You know, it's just, it's fishing, you know, and it's not them doing, yeah, they probably blew some casts or something like that, but that's fishing. It's okay. You know, it's not a sleigh fest every day. And if it was, I'd probably be bored with it and I probably wouldn't be as passionate as I am about it, you know, because there is failure. I mean, we're going out in a massive body of water with hundreds of variables that could come into play and you're trying to target a fish you know of course yeah we have our fishy areas and stuff like that but i mean you can't make that fish eat and i've had days where i've seen hundreds of redfish and had zero eats and nothing but refusals changing baits doing this doing that i mean that is fishing there's if you want that instant gratification it, fishing is probably not for you because you're gonna have failure you know, and you get a video game system. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, my Hell's Bay needs a couple of heated seats too, because it's been cold lately. It's been real cold lately. So they're saying it's like in Canada, colder than Mars, which I didn't really know Mars was cold, but really? I'll take their word for it. So yeah, I haven't been to Mars yeah. yet, but there's all sorts of factors that can go into to a great experience. Some of my favorite days with my dad are not necessarily days that we caught the most fish. You yeah. Know, we just had good moments. We bonded. We talked about important things. I learned some stuff like, I still love going out with my dad and I, I learn a lot every time I'm around my dad. If I go to lunch with him or if I'm on the boat with him, you know, and, and I think that's part of what it's about. Even if you're, you know, even if your guide is your dad, like it's, right. it's about that relationship. Well, and it's like what you said, learning, you're always learning. I'm always learning. Yeah. I, I, I learn from my clients, even though my clients don't have crazy amounts of experience or they're brand new. I am learning. I am taking a piece from that client and putting in my, my guide repertoire. Yeah. Uh, you know, I guess you could say, and you know, it just, uh, if, it, if you stop learning, you might as well just put it up, yeah. man. And that's why we started this podcast. Cause I mean, everybody that's a part of it outside of my dad, my dad's pretty old, but you know, our group of friends, we're young and we just wanted to meet guides and talk with them and learn from them and create this place where people can not share spots right, and not, not uh, start fights or anything like that, but a place where people could come and learn from each other and have discussion and be better at their craft and what they're doing. And is there anybody on this podcast that, that you would like to hear from or think that we should interview? Uh, man, there's a bunch of good guides. I mean, you know, uh, I, I will talk about that. I don't, I don't want to name drop anybody. I got cause, you. That's cause, a good point. you know, some people might get a little butt hurt, you know, yeah. cause I didn't mention them or didn't say their name first. No, I'm joking, man. But you know, there's a bunch of good guides that, and I think you guys, um, you know, this podcast is great because it allows people to meet, you know, these people that like kind of what we talked about, Josh, you know, you see these people on social media and this and that and all you know them is from their highlights or their pictures and you really don't know the backstory about them and uh you know this podcast is is pretty cool i mean i'm not trying to blow your heads up or anything but you, <laughs> you're on the right track, I, I have man. one more question yeah go for I it i mean i'm sure we have plenty of time but i just one i want to throw in there uh i see you catch a lot of huge black drum <laughs> are you catching those with fly rods uh from time to time we will um you know, black drum have terrible eyesight. Oh, there's. Yeah. So you you know you gotta when you're sight fishing a black drum, you better drop that thing right in front of them. I like using, uh, I fish Slayer Ink. Uh, little shout out Chris Sensi, you know. <laughs> uh, but I I fish uh, Slayer Ink soft plastics, and I like their paddle tail for a black drum. The reason for that is they could feel that paddle tail. You know, and if you reel it up to them and drop it in front of their head and then just barely move your rod tip to slightly move that uh, bait. So it's either 
making noise on the bottom or sending out vibrations on the bottom, those that fish will pick it up with those little whiskers under, underneath their chin. And uh, you'll only feel a little thump. So if you yeah. think you you better and, – and set the hook good because, you know, you just want a good stick in them because once you get a good stick in them, it should hold. But, I mean, I've had some fish. I mean, it's not like a, a big redfish. You stick a big redfish, that thing is going to start head shaking and possibly throw your stuff. That uh, Black drums is going to turn into a five-gallon bucket that you're yeah, going to be just pulling in. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and then it's going to be slimy and smelly. And, you know, I, I – Again, I enjoy big fish. I don't do, care what. Do type you have fish. a fly you like to throw at them? The reason I asked, we do. We had a summer. We were, dude. We were chasing these tail and black drum, and they were everywhere. And we were seeing them every day. We went. We could not. I think we caught two that summer mm-hmm. between yeah, three, three of, of us. us, and then we were going a lot. Well, see, I I, and I, I like using heavy eyes, and the heavy just eyes something to get that get well, that fly down. To get me. it down, but but then when it hits that ground, it's going to make that vibration. Yeah, yeah. You, that's you, a good point. You, you know, so if you have a Light eyes, one, it's going to float down, and those fish eat on the bottom. So it doesn't make sense to do that. I like using either a big crab pattern or uh, a big shrimp pattern or a crab pattern with heavy eyes. So it does get down to that fish. And you're with sight fishing and fly fishing, keeping that fly in the zone of that fish as long as possible is your biggest key to success. You know, so. Uh, for black drum, how big is that zone, in your opinion? Whew, not that big. Not that big because, I mean, like I said, you know, their eyesight's terrible. So dr- getting it in front of them is huge and then dropping it down. I like to strip it up to that fish and just let it, with the fly, let it drop mm-hmm. straight down as hard as it can and try to put it in front of that fish so it does either see it, feel it, you know, any of that, um, to just to catch their attention. Mm. Well, that's good man well we and, appreci- and that'll be 50 bucks too by the way. yeah that, I, hey i was about to say man that was <laughs> yeah that sorry was great man I just had had that. we don't have to put that in there no, <laughs> no, we're, we go gotta put that it. in yeah there, that, that is some good stuff there. right so there, so just venmo me <laughs> yeah. you know yeah, i got you and, and make donations yeah, yeah, yeah i'll, I'll pull good. i'll pull you around on the bone tag for a day we'll swap it out i haven't seen the pointy side of a boat in a long time any any day man hey that's that's a that's a uh that's a great way to pay pay back if you listen to this podcast and you use that and you catch a big nasty black drum. Pull me around, dude. Go ahead and and throw him a tag on social media, throw him a shout out, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you'll be known as the black drum guy, the river rat. Uh, the river rat. <laughs> the river rat strikes uh, again, man. Yes, but, the river rat. Yeah. That was like third grade, man. That was good times, man. But the river rat, the guy with the name River Rat, if you're out there, man, we love you. Yes, that dude's definitely good at black drum. If your yeah. name's the river rat, you're yeah. like, you're like catfish, black drum, uh, jacks, you know, you got the whole, the whole kit and caboodle right there. Right. With the river rat. Yeah. The old river rat. <laughs> but thanks for hanging out with us, man. Any, anything you want to say before we head out? No, nah, man. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks for having me on. You know, it was very cool. Very cool. And, uh, just everybody just keep on fishing. Right on. And, and where can we find you? People want to fish with you? Uh, you go, uh, skinny situation charters.com uh, my instagram handle is skinny situation charters um and i'm on facebook too you know so uh if you want to follow the venture by all means if not it's all good man all good man well, right we on. appreciate it thanks for coming on thanks man what's up you old salty dogs Thanks for joining us on the Captain's Collective. We have some great upcoming podcasts lined up to release, and we hope that you'll continue to support this project. Keep sharing feedback with us, and if you have some time, please pass along this podcast to others. We hope that you get plenty of time out on the water. Thanks for being a part. We'll catch you next time. This is the Captain's Collective.